G'day guys, it's Mac with the Outer Circle, and today we're going to review the Hellot One 3D printer. I'm going to show you how to set it up, how to use it, and perform a print. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I bought this very printer. I wasn't given it, it's not a promotional piece. I went out of my way to buy a printer because I liked what it said on the paper. Now, spoiler alert, this thing performed. But, that's neither here nor there. What we have here is we have an excellent 3D printer for a very good price. Very user friendly. As you'll see over the course of the video, it's quick to set up and easy to use. What I've done here is chosen a printer that I think is good. And one of the biggest selling points for me is, firstly, the large five inch screen interface. Fantastic. But second, this thing has Wi-Fi compatibility which means if I need to do any firmware updating or even transfer a file across, I can simply go into settings and then I can go into my system settings and hit refresh and then we'll look for the latest firmware. It's built in automatically, fantastic. And when I go into print, it stores a file on there. Only one, but you only need to store one because the one it automatically saves to it is the one you're currently printing. So you simply plug the USB in, hit print, it transfers the file across, and you're free to take the USB away and go do something else, work on some more files, etc. Trust me when I say that's a quality of life feature you're going to love. Now, let's go into what you get in the package. So included inside this when you open up the packaging is a filter. This is a paint filter, very cheap. You can buy them from your local hardware store and you use it to strain the resin that you pour back into the bottle because you don't want to have that resin getting uh, contaminated and having gunk and debris and putting that into the rest of your resin bottle and contaminating that. Resin isn't technically cheap. You get a lovely little card with Creality, quality uh, certified thing. Yep, yeah, neat. Allen keys. These three Allen keys will be used for various tasks such as the bed leveling, we will undo the build plate with them. You can also move the printing film on the screen. We'll get to that later. We also get a USB thumb drive. I've put two files onto this already for printing, which I'll use for testing. I could have used Wi-Fi, but USB is easier than the Wi-Fi for purposes of a demonstration because it's what most people will do. Also have a spare release film for the printer very nice to have available to us. Uh, this will be attached to the printer uh, automatically, but the spare one is here in case this original one that comes with it is damaged. We also have a 3D printer user manual, and this is quite a good manual. Uh, interestingly, it illustrates in both Chinese and English all throughout, I suppose because they are a Chinese brand, but it gets very weird when you get to some pages and you see an identical image and it's like, hang on a minute, you're not going from that through this to that. No, no, it's just ignore one half. At first it threw me for a six because I thought it was some crazy typo and then common sense kicked in. Also get a little brush included for cleaning and a metal scraper, which I do not suggest a metal scraper. It can damage your build plate and the quality of this thing is pretty underwhelming. I mean, it's free, which is great, but the tang isn't even centered properly. I mean, it'll work, but they're, they're a cheap tool anyway. So some of the tools you want to include, however, are a mask, What you may want to include on top of this is actually one, a mask, because this resin is nasty stuff, two, some rubber gloves, and three, a plastic spatula or scraper for removing the part. Less likely to do damage to the part, and if you hit it with a little tap from a mallet or hammer on the back, gently, it will help you remove parts from the build plate without damaging it. I recommend this. So it comes time to actually look in the printer. First, Simply lift the cover off. What we have access to now is the build plate and the vat. The build plate we can simply remove by turning this knob 
and by unscrewing it counterclockwise, we can release the build plate. The build plate is held with four cap head Allen key bolts. I believe looking at them, they would be a three mil. Yes, 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 and yes. So all three mil bolts. This bad boy supposedly comes already leveled and calibrated from factory. However, for the sake of the video, we're gonna go through this anyway. We also have the vat. Now the interesting thing about this vat is it's plastic, not aluminium, like my Anycubic Photon. This is not really a problem for me. For some people, uh, they wanna have a vat that is completely solid aluminium, very tough, hard wearing, yes, agreed but it's not really an issue. What's also interesting about it is it actually has different heights built in on these steps. That way you know how much resin you're actually adding into the bath. Now, before we actually use this, we're going to put it aside and we're going to do that leveling that I spoke about. So leveling in this printer is actually pretty easy. First thing we'll do is peel off this protective adhesive sheet. This is to protect from dust and other contaminants during transit. I'm then going to place a piece of paper on top of the screen. In this case, I'm just using the warranty at the back of the uh, included manual. Then I'm going to put my bill plate back on, screw it up. Then with my Allen key, I'm going to crack or loosen these bolts. They're not super tight in the first place, nor should they have to be, but definitely a strong finger tight. Now that that is loose, I'll go into my settings, Z-axis movement, leveling. As this process goes along, the bed is going to automatically move up and down and align and calibrate itself for the printer. When it finishes this action, it's going to come down and place itself on top of the paper. Once it's on top of the paper, we will then firmly press down on it and tension the Allen keys. So we've already moved our build plate up to the very top and it's on its return stroke on the downward now. The whole process has taken approximately three minutes in order for it to travel the full length of the screw twice. Now that it's going to press down upon our screen, it's time that we tighten it up. Now, the important thing here was to loosen these four screws prior to it coming down. If you do not loosen it correctly and it's too tight and too close to the screen, it will crack it. This is pretty much the only thing you can do which will instantly destroy your printer. It is repairable, but you're going to pay for it. We simply press down firmly and we tighten the four cap head screws. We've now leveled the bed. So we can simply go into our settings and home the printing head out of the way and remove our paper. Next, we place the vat back into the printer. I've cleaned this vat off the screen. It presses up against the two locking plates located at the rear of the print bed here. and it lines it up the threads nicely with the printer. I will now pour in some UV resin. Again, notice how I'm wearing gloves and I've shaken up the bottle nicely. And we're going to the second line, which is plenty for the test prints that we're going to perform. Now I'll remove all my tooling away from the area as is no longer required and install the hood back onto the printer, to prevent any stray UV light or any particulates from getting into the resin. We'll then take our USB 
and insert it into the printer. With our USB installed, I'm now able to go into the files, select the file that I want to print, double tap it, the file is copied across to the printer, allowing me to remove the USB and go get something else ready. And I simply will print start. And we'll come back when this print is hopefully done. All right, so it's the next day. Come back to the printer now, and it's time to grab our part out, which hopefully it's produced. So I've got a little bit of paper towel here that we'll remove the part onto, and we'll have a look. So you may notice the color of the resin is different. That's okay, it's meant to be. When I originally went to produce the video, I went, hang on a minute, why have I poured a dark gray resin in there? I want to show you a translucent resin. So before it even started the print, I simply hit pause and then stop on the printer. Now an interesting thing to note with pausing this is on this particular brand of printer as it's currently configured, when you pause it, it doesn't raise the printing head out of the vat of resin, which is something most other printers do. So I'm hoping that they update that down the line and it'll be an easy update to do with the Wi-Fi. However, as it stands, they do not do this. So now it's a matter of simply unscrewing the print head. As you can see, I'm wearing a latex glove because I don't want to get the resin on me because it's pretty nasty stuff. And I'm going to turn it and scrape any leftover resin off as much as I can back into the vat because I do not want to spill this rather nasty stuff everywhere. And there we have finished miniature. Let's see if I can zoom right in there on that. Rather nice high detail miniature. But we'll have a good look at it in a moment when we come back because I'm going to wash and cure this and then we'll finish talking about it. So before we finish up here today, there's one last thing I want to talk about and that is cleaning the machine. Here we have the bit of sprue I removed off the miniature. This piece of sprue here can absolutely cause you misery in life because the tiny, tiny little pieces of sprue can break off when you peel the model off the build plate or when it's pulling out of the bath during manufacture. If a piece of this stays in the bottom of the resin vat, it will cause you no end of grief because there is a chance it could puncture through the FEP film, that thin sheet of plastic in the bottom of the resin vat. And when it punctures through, that means one, you're gonna get a bad model because you're gonna have a weird texture that the light has to shine through. But also, you risk damage to your screen and the resin leaking out and covering your screen, which will then go hard and cure. So prevent this, Creality, to their credit, put in a very simple cleaning mechanism. We go into our settings and we hit clean. What this will do is it will expose the bottom layer of the resin to ultraviolet light. As the solid resin is heavier or denser than the liquid resin that it's surrounded by, it sinks to the bottom naturally. So when we cure the entire bottom layer, any pieces of debris or detritus will get stuck to that bottom layer and cure themselves along with it. And at the end of it, we're able to remove it as a single piece. Now the cleaning cycle is complete. We no longer need to have the printer on. We can simply open the top up and remove the resin receptacle. Then, pressing it firmly against the FEP, you can hear, as I press against the edge of it, the plate lifting up. We do this because you don't want to just go into there and dig around, you risk damaging the screen. Okay. 
and that is our waste material. So any particulates or other debris that's in there has now been collected and it can do no damage to our printer. This is incredibly useful because it means you don't need to drain the vat and simply you can move on to the next print. This will now go into the rubbish bin. I have a bag right behind me prepared for this. And I'm done with it. There you go guys. That is the first printed miniature. There's no cleanup, no filing, no sanding. This is literally just as I've pulled the supports off from underneath. You can see it has all this incredibly fine detail, like little chains and skulls and trophies and even tiny little spikes on the elbows. Great muscle tone. You can see these sort of tattered flesh-like leather cloak that he's wearing. This miniature took five hours to print. But the beauty is you could have a dozen miniatures the size of this one on that build plate. It would take the exact same amount of time to print because it goes off the height, not the width of the object. That is what you can do in a 3D printer. That's no settings changed, stock as a rock, straight out of the box, with a standard resin you can buy off the shelf for about $25 for 500 milliliters. And it was able to produce this. No fine tuning of settings or anything like that. All these beautiful muscle striations and such, whatever the STL file has, is what you can do. I have a choice. I could pour the resin back out into its tub through a filter, of course, uh, if you want to make sure there's absolutely no particles in it, or I can simply leave the resin in there until I come back and use it again. But a word of warning, if you're going to do that, protect the printer. Place a object such as a completely black dustbin over the top, even the box it arrived in, in order to prevent any excess UV light getting to it, because you risk that some of the resin will cure inside the vat or on the build plate. And that is really gonna hurt your printer long-term and is horrible to clean. So don't do it. Anyway, that's it for the Creality Hell at One. That's my review. This is a fantastic piece of equipment and I can't wait to give one away at my event. Uh, confirmed, this thing is fantastic. Glad I bought it. And uh, yeah, I'll put a link up in the video where you can click on that and it'll take you to Creality's website if you're interested in getting one. Uh, if they don't have them available in your region, no worries. Don't feel like you have to come to me or you go and do you. You go wherever you can get it for the best price for you and you'll look after yourself first. I'm Mac with The Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.